Hey, Tom Ogier again, looking at uh, infographics and working precisely in Illustrator. This is part two uh, of a two-parter where we're looking at the exact same infographic, just going to approach it from a different angle. In the previous one, we used measurements and create a series of concentric circles. Uh, in this one, we're going to use almost exclusively the appearance palette to create multiple offsetted strokes. Just to, so you can see that there's multiple ways to do this and, uh, and advantages and disadvantages to both of them. So we're going to start uh, just by clearing the canvas again. And if you're going to follow along, this is a uh, 500 by 500 point document that we created. And as always in Illustrator, we're starting off with the show bounding box option turned off and smart guides turned on. All right, so I'm just going to start by creating a black circle with no stroke at the moment. It doesn't really matter actually whether you have a stroke or not, but uh, let's get start with a black circle and no stroke and drawing out from the center with the option key held down and drawing out. doesn't really matter how big you go because once again we're going to start using a nice round number of 100 pixels or 100 point. don't know why I typed that in twice because with the lock icon you really only need to type it in once. Alright, so there's a 100 point circle there. Now in the last example we used offset path or we actually no we didn't, we created concentric circles um, that were spaced out equally by 50 points. In this example, we're going to actually use a feature, maybe a little known feature of the appearance palette, which is the ability to have multiple paths associated to an object. All right, so we're starting off with our first circle. Um, now we want to create a white stroke that extends beyond that circle. Um, so if you have the appearance palette open, or if you don't, you can find it under the window menu, window, appearance, um, all right, so when we've got appearance open, you can see the fill and the stroke right here. And so we can easily attach a new stroke to the object by clicking here on the stroke palette and then pulling down, choosing a color, and then typing in a stroke desired stroke weight. And if you don't have a recalcitrant mouse, things work a lot better. So I'm going to give myself a stroke weight of 100 points, which actually sounds wrong, because you know that from the previous example, we really only want to go out 50 points. Uh, just don't forget that a stroke always goes in and it goes out as well as going in. So a 100 point stroke actually goes out 50 points and in 50 points from the line by default. We can change that in the stroke options. You can click on the dotted stroke line to go into the stroke options. And we can change it over here under Align Stroke, but for historical reasons, I don't actually trust this, so we're not going to use that method. Um, what we're going to do instead is we're going to make sure that the stroke sits underneath the fill. This is actually a really cool uh, technique that you can then use to layer multiple strokes. The Appearance Palette is almost like a little mini layers palette. Not often known, but if you click and drag this down, uh, you can reorder your stroke. You can reorder your uh, stroke in your fill so that the stroke is now sitting under the fill. And now, unfortunately, you can't really tell. Let's change the color of the stroke temporarily just to so you can see what's going on. There it is. So that's a that red stroke represents 50 points going out and 50 points going in, but the in part is sitting underneath the black fill, so we really can't see it. So really only taking advantage of the 50 point going out. Now, to get the next, I'll just leave it red for now, to get the next one going out, uh, we just have to add another stroke. And what you can do is you can go over here to the little menu, the flyout menu under the appearance tab, which you're not going to see in the Camtasia screen capture because it's going off the, sc the screen. Just trust me on this. In fact, just follow along. I'm going to use that, pull down, we're going to say add new stroke, second option down from the list. And that creates a second stroke, which happens to have the very same qualities as the first stroke. We're going to use the stroke at the bottom, because we're going to create the one even underneath the previous one. Set that color to black. And change the size of that stroke to 200 points. And there you go. Perfect target. What's really neat about this, I'm just going to switch to outline mode here. You can see it's just one circle. There's not even three paths here. It's a single path. The reason that's kind of cool is that it allows us to adjust things really easily. If we need to move this around, we're only selecting one shape. If we want to change the size of it, scale it, whatever, we're only selecting one shape. So it actually works really well, and it's very portable. Um, now I'm just going to set this back to white, so that we get the exact results that we're looking for.
Uh, now, if you did want this to be hollow like in the previous example, we'd still need to expand this. So once we select that, you'd be going to Object Menu, Expand Appearance, and then once again, Expand. It's actually a two-step process. We expand the appearance into multiple shapes, and then we expand those multiple strokes into individual shapes, and then we can use Pathfinder, or we can use Compound Path to, to remove them. All right. So uh, now let's see if we can do the same thing for the arrow. I'm going to switch to the Pen Tool. And once again, starting from the center point. Ah, so there's a bit of a problem here, right? So that's going to cause us some issues because we can no longer snap to the edge of this shape. So we've got a couple of strategies that we can use uh, to solve that. I'm just going to delete that last point so I don't have a straight point So while I talk about this issue. Uh, so one thing that we can do is we can do the, the expand, okay? Um, so that sort of the expand defeats the purpose a little bit because it will remove all of the the good stuff that we've done here. Uh, now we do know the dimensions of that outer circle. We know it's 300 pixels. We can simply uh, use an ellipse and just uh, click on the center here, type in 300, and we've got ourselves a circle. Now it does remember some of the appearance of the previous, so we do do want to turn that stroke off, set that stroke to none, and then we can just use that. And what we can do is press Control Five and set that as a guide. So let's just take a look here. Um, so this outer edge here, it's been set with control 5, that's actually a guide. Uh, in outline mode, doesn't show so well, but you can see when we're in preview mode, yeah, a little cyan highlight, the typical guide color. So that's one way of getting that circle out there, is just by knowing the measurements. Not sure that's the, the most efficient way. Well, it probably is the fastest way, but the most efficient way might be to take this shape copy it, control C. I'm copying the shape so that I have a copy of it after I'm going to do a destructive operation on this shape. I'm going to go to here, object, expand appearance, and then object, expand. I'm going to expand my fill and my stroke and press OK. And as you can see now, I'm just going to switch to outline mode. That's created my complete targets as if I had drawn them manually. And I don't really need all of those, but I'm just going to have them there temporarily. And uh, that allows me to go and draw my arrow and snap to my edges as before. Draw those four points. And then as soon as that's drawn, well, I might want to keep this around a little bit longer, but if I'm happy with the shape, then I can already go ahead and delete that shape. But I'm not going to jump the gun. I'm just going to select this guy, mirror it vertically, press on the copy button, select both halves, group them so that I can then double click and go into isolation mode using my white arrow tool selecting control or command J to join them control or command J ah, the old mouse playing its usual tricks okay selecting both of those points control J and then I can pop out of isolation mode this time I'm just going to use this link up here to pop out of isolation mode select the shape, ungroup it, control shift G, and then take this guy, I can delete it. Now it's gone, right? But I don't, I still have in the copy buffer, so I'll press control F or command F. Actually, I could have pressed command B, be even better. Select the arrow, press control B, that pastes behind the currently selected item, which is exactly what we want to do. So this item is now behind the arrow, and that's the original item. Uh, that I had copied in a step before. So if you're going to do this approach, it's really good to kind of think ahead a couple of moves, and if you need to copy something so that you have it in reserve later on, do it. Just copy something, you know, just copy it and to be on the safe side, because uh, undo wouldn't have helped us. Undo would have then gotten rid of the arrow. Uh, so copying something and keeping it in reserve, you can then use paste in front or paste behind to place it back. All right, grabbing our arrow. Now let's try the alternative approach again using the appearance palette to add our stroke. So once again, we're going to use a white stroke. That's going to be a 50 point white stroke. And of course it's in front, so now unless you want a really minuscule little arrowhead, you're going to want to take that stroke and drag it down. There we go. The stroke now sits underneath the fill and away you go. And once again we've got the mitering issue which we can just address in the stroke palette by either setting our corner to a beveled join or keeping the corner where it is and setting the limit down to zero. Either one will work just fine. And there we go. 